Hey guys, welcome to a new Java E tutorial. In this video, we will upgrade our environment to be able to use Java EE7. In the upcoming tutorials, I will show some new mechanics which were introduced with the new Java EE version. In order to use it, we need to upgrade our JDK, Eclipse and Glassfish. So basically everything. First, we will download and install the latest JDK 8. We head over to the Oracle site where we can download the JDK. I will put the link down in the video description. Here you find the newest JDK update. It's important that you download the correct version. So either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version. It must match the version of Eclipse which you are downloading in the next step. Otherwise Eclipse won't work with this Java. Once you downloaded the installer, just install it with the default settings and head over to the Eclipse download page. Under eclipse.org slash downloads, you can easily download the newest Eclipse IDE for Java E developers. Currently this is Eclipse Mars. But Glassfish 4.1 should also work with Eclipse Lunar, for example. Here you need to take care of the version again. Choose the one you used for your JDK. The Eclipse package don't need to be installed on your system. It's enough if you just extract the zip file to whatever location you like. Last but not least, we will download the Glassfish 4.1 from the glassfish.java.net page. Here you just go to downloads and choose the full platform which is again a zip file that you can easily extract and there's no installation needed. Once you extracted Eclipse run it and the first that you will be asked is the workspace which it should use. You can just use the default place or choose whatever workspace you like. Eclipse is now starting up and now it's ready to use. First we will close the welcome screen and now we are in the developer view for the Java EE development, which uh, seems pretty like the known one from the older Eclipse ones. Let's add our Glassfish server. We go to help Eclipse marketplace and here we just search for Glassfish, which will bring us the Glassfish tools. We press install, check the required part and additionally you can also add the Java E 7 documentation. Head over to the next site, accept the license and now it's installing. Sometimes you can get a weird error message that some part of the plugin is not available, but it seems like this message has no effect on the installation whatsoever, so you can easily ignore it and continue. Once the installation finished, you will need to restart Eclipse. And now we need to change the default installed JRE locations. So we go to Window, Preferences, search for Install, and you see under Java, Installed JREs. Eclipse finds the default JRE location, but for running the Glassfish server in Eclipse we need to choose the JDK. So we click edit, go to directory and just switch over to the JDK. Also rename the name to K and finish. Okay, now we can switch to the server tab, create a new server, choose the Glassfish 4 which also includes the support for Glassfish 4.1. Now we need to add the server root so this is the path where you extract it, insert this or use the browse button and navigate to it. Go to next and now you can either let those default values stay here because the main one is automatically created by the installation or you can change the domain at the end here. So then you press finish and you see our server is down here. It's currently stopped so we will start it to see that everything is working. One common thing I noticed, it can happen that the Glassfish server will start up, but still the status label is starting in Eclipse, resulting in an current current timeout exception after about 60 seconds. This is not directly related to Eclipse Mars, but to the newest version of the Glassfish tools, so it can probably also happen in Eclipse Luna as well. If this happens to you, all you need to do is to remove the Glassfish, from the server tab and edit again the same way we did here. Once you did that, the problem should not reoccur. At least it didn't for me. Now the server is started up and let's import and migrate our latest project from this tutorial series into our new Eclipse environment. So we go import, import and choose existing 
project into workspace because the project is already on this computer. So we browse to it choosing the project we want to import, which is our first app application, which we created at the beginning of this tutorial series. And I will copy the project into the new workspace, press finish. It will now take a short amount of time building the workspace. And now it's done. If you open it up, you see there are no direct errors in some of the folders, but the project configuration seems to get an error because there is a red marker. So we go to properties and search for faces and choose project faces. And on the right side under runtime, we see there is the runtime Glassfish 3.1 activated currently, but we are now using Glassfish 4. So we remove Glassfish 3 and cross the Glassfish 4 runtime saying OK and the error is gone. So now we can add our project to the cluster server to test that everything is working. It's synchronized so the deployment was successfully. Don't worry about those errors here. This is because our JNDI property isn't available on the new server because I haven't created it yet. So also all the other JDBC data sources or Java mail sessions are not available. But we will check that the application is still running by going to the localhost 8080 port. And you see there is the submit button. So our page is correctly shown. Only the property is missing here. And that's all. Now we are prepared for Java E7 and you will see some of the new features in the upcoming tutorials. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to write a comment and I hope I see you soon.